Hello everybody and welcome back. It's nice to have you here. In this tutorial, we're going to be turning this middle section of this back wall here. So this section right behind the sofa. All right. We're going to be turning it into this cool looking rocky surface. Okay. And we're going to be doing that with the help of V-Ray displacement. All right. Now, why are we going to be turning this middle section here into a rocky looking surface? Well, Let's take a look at our composition here for just a second. So we've got this plant wall here on the left side of the sofa, on the left side of the couch, right? And it's adding some visual interest. And I reckon we're going to want to place something on the right side here as well. What will we be placing here? I don't know yet. It could be a closet. It could be some sort of a curtain, anything really. Some sort of a compositional element is going to end up here on the right side, I think. And that means that this middle section, sort of right behind the sofa, is going to look a little bit plain. It's going to look a little bit barren, all right? So we're going to tackle this barren problem straight on ahead here. And so in this tutorial, again, we're going to be turning that middle section into a rocky surface, okay? So now that we know what we'll be doing and why we'll be doing it, let's just go to work here, shall we? So. The way that V-Ray displacement works is you take your object that you want to displace and you apply a V-Ray geometry tag to it. All right. And then that object, that mesh is going to get displaced. But if you'll remember our architecture mesh here, so our back walls, our window openings, if you will, our floors are all part of this one object. Okay. So we're going to have to think a little bit about how we're going to want to set things up so we can displace just this middle section in the back here. All right. Now, generally speaking, there's two way on how we can approach this. One way would be to UV unwrap this entire architecture mesh and just apply displacement onto that middle section. But again, that would require us to do that manual labor of UV unwrapping the entire thing, which I know this is a simple object, but it's still sort of time consuming and a bit tedious. So let's not think twice about this option here. And instead, you know, let's focus on the other option, which would be to create a couple of cuts. So do we create a proper split for this middle section here? And then we're going to split that geometry into its own object that will then be able to displace using the V-Ray geometry tag. Okay. And so we're going to be focused on the easier and most efficient option here. Okay. Now, uh, like we said, first thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to do some cuts so that we create a proper sort of uh, section here right behind the sofa. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go into my top view and I'm just going to select those back wall polygons just like this. Okay. Then next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my plane cut tool. I'm going to make sure that the plane is set to Y, Z or J, Z if you're into those kind of jokes. And then I'm also going to make sure that my restrict the selection toggle here is toggle to on. Okay. Cause we want to restrict this cut just to this back wall selection that we made here. Okay. All right. Now we can do some cutting. So I want to leave a little bit of a separation line, separation geometry, if you will, between this plant wall here. So I'm not going to cut it right here. Okay. I'm just going to cut it a little bit more to the right. So something like this, I think we'll do just fine. All right. And now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make the same exact cut on the right side here of the sofa as well. And I'm using the sofa as a reference for where we've cut things. Okay. So we've cut the back wall sort of right here in relation to the sofa. So we're going to do the same thing on the right side here as well. So something like that. Okay. This way we're essentially splitting the walls into thirds, which I think is going to look kind of nice. So we got this section on the left here, then we got this middle section, and then we got this right section here. Okay. Now, obviously you could measure, uh, these cuts, right. And make sure that they align properly and are super precise, but I think, uh, visually this is going to work just fine for us here. Okay, cool. With that done, uh, what we'll do next here is we're going to select these middle polygons and we're going to extrude them inwards. All right. Now, why do we want to extrude them inwards? Well, remember, we're going to be creating a rocky surface and it's going to get displaced. The geometry is actually going to get displaced. And so certain parts of that rocky surface are going to be protruding forward. So towards the sofa and other parts might potentially protrude sort of backwards. So towards the back wall here. And if we don't make this extrusion here, you know, we're going to get some nasty intersections happening, which, you know, it's not going to look well. 
All right. So um, let's just make the extrusion here and that should do it for us. So actually, you know, if uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, we have our bevel deformer enabled here and because we've created this sort of thin geometry here at the top, we're going to have some beveling issues at the top here. So let's undo that extrusion here and uh, let's just deselect this top part here. Okay, if we go into our main view, all right, you can see that the walls are super high in our scene. So we're never going to see this top part here ever, right? So we can just deselect it and now make a hole, all right? And that's, you know, going to solve that beveling problem for us. So yes, we're technically cheating a little bit here, but hey, that's, that's fine because nobody's ever going to see it, right? Right. Okay. So with that done, we can start splitting the geometry. So I'm going to select uh, our architecture mesh here. I'm going to select these uh, middle section polygons, if you will. And I'm just going to right click on them and I'm going to hit the split command. That's going to split those polygons into its own object. I'm going to move them out of the main null and I'm going to give them a proper name. So rocky surface. Then we can delete the bevel deformer. We don't need it. And we can also delete these materials in here because we don't need those either. Then what I also want to do is, because I'm kind of annoyed by this, uh, you know, our axes uh, stayed sort of in the middle of our scene here, right? Now that we split this uh, surface, this mesh, and that's kind of annoying because, you know, uh, kind of gets hard to move things around here. So let's just reset this axis. I'm going to hit shift C on my keyboard. I'm going to type center axis two, and I'm going to hit enter. And that's just going to center that axis back to our mesh. And it's going to center it to the middle of our object of our mesh. And, uh, you know, that's really going to make it easier to move this thing around here. Cause now the axis is actually where the object is, which is, you know, perfect. All right, cool. So with that done, let's talk about V-Ray displacement here. All right. So again, to get the V-Ray displacement going, what you need to do is you need to right click on the object you want to displace. You go under the V-Ray tags here and you plop a geometry tag onto that object, onto that mesh. In the V-Ray geometry tag, you're going to see that you have the displacement menu. All you need to do now is you need to enable it and you gain access to the displacement settings here. All right. Now, uh, the first thing that we're going to want to, uh, you know, tweak with the displacement here is we're going to want to plug in a texture in here. And we already have one prepared. It's this Quixel Megascans uh, displacement texture of a rocky surface. As you can see, it's just your regular displacement texture. These uh, lighter parts here, right, are going to be protruding forwards a little bit more than these grayer, darker parts. Right. And that's pretty much your typical displacement map right here. Now, a small production tip, if we may here. OK, with displacement map, it's always really cool if they're a 32 bit texture. OK, now, um, yes, you can also use 16 bit textures and 8 bit textures. But with those and especially with 8 bit textures, you might run into issues where the image itself doesn't have enough color information pixel color information to create that nice smooth gradient effect. Okay. So you might get some weird visual artifacting happening. So proper displacement maps are almost always 32 bit, sometimes 16 bit. Okay. So that's just a bit of a tip right there. Okay. So, um, with that said, let's take our displacement map here and let's plug it into the displacement texture slot right here. All right. All right, cool. So the next thing that we'll want to do here is we're going to make sure that this displacement is properly mapped onto our surface, onto our object here. And to do that, we're going to leverage this material tag slot here. All right. So we're going to want to plug in a material tag. Well, <laughs> we're going to want to plug a material tag in here. But as you can see, you know, our rocky surface has no material tag. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right click on it. We're going to go under material tags and we're going to create a material tag. All right. And in here, we're going to set the projection to be cubic. All right. And uh, we could mess around with the offsets and select the new values. Basically what we're doing with this tag here, we're saying how this displacement is going to be mapped onto our surface. So we don't need to plug any materials into this material tag here. No, this material tag here is just going to be here for our displacement mapping purposes. Okay. Now uh, with this material tag created, all we need to do is we need to drag it into the material tag slot in here. And now we're mapping the displacement according to what's set in this material 
tag in here. Okay. And I think these default values will do just fine here. So let's bring up the V-Ray VFB and let's start the V-Ray interactive renderer. Okay. Um, and now, as you can see, you know, you can already see where this, this mesh is getting displaced, but you know, the displacement itself is a little bit timid. So let's, let's up the amount here. So, uh, to up the displacement amount, just, you know, locate the displacement amount parameter and set it to what you want it to, to be set. Right. So let's try 20 centimeters and look at that. That's looking pretty cool. It's, it's displacing in this really visually appealing way, at least to me, it is. Right. It, it actually might be a little too strong. So let's maybe tone it down to 10 centimeters. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. And I think that's looking pretty great. Now with this placement, you know, cause it is an actual geometrical effect, right? What you typically want to do is you want to, uh, kind of jump out of your camera here a little bit. Okay. And take a look at the thing from different angles, just, just so you get a better feel for how, um, the entire mesh is now looking. And I think, you know, 10 centimeters and this kind of mapping that we've set here, I think it's going to work just great for us here. All right. Besides, we can always go back in here and uh, tweak things uh, as far as mapping goes or as far as the strength go and all that. Right. Okay. Now, uh, there's just one thing here that we do want to mention is that obviously, cause this is, it's, this is a separated mesh here. You know, if you, if we pull it forward a little bit, you're going to see that it's not actually connected to the walls here. Okay. So, um, that's not going to be a problem for us here. We're just going to want to sort of position this back wall here. Uh, so that it kind of fits nicely, but if we get these sort of holes here, that's not going to be a huge problem, especially so on the right side, hand side here, just because remember, you know, we're going to be, uh, putting some sort of a compositional element here and we can just sort of make sure that it's kind of hiding that connection line here. Okay. All right. Um, that said, we do want to make sure that the displacement, well, that this mesh is kind of connecting nicely on the left side here with the plant wall. And I think it is now oh, it's actually protruding just a little bit. So let's push it inwards just a little bit. All right, there we go. You know, because we can't quite hide this sort of intersection here on the left. So, you know, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to make sure that it looks uh, good here, but the right side we can hide. So we're not going to worry about that here. All right. Cool. So now this, uh, this middle section here is displaced. It's looking all cool and sweet. Uh, but there's still one thing that we probably want to do here is we, we want to apply a material to it. So let's just take our wall material that's applied to our rocky surface. And don't forget, we don't want to apply it. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to put this material onto this material tag here, because again, this one is just driving the displacement mapping, right? So we just want to drag it onto our object. It's going to create a new material tag and look at that. That's going to drive the look of that middle section there. All right. Now, before we actually go and we start concluding this tutorial, let's just spend a minute or two talking about the displacements quality settings. Okay. The displacements quality settings can be accessed via the V-Ray geometry tag. If you go under the quality menu in here. Okay. So not the displacement menu, but the quality menu. Now by default, you're going to see that we have this use global settings option checked to on. And this means that the quality settings are going to be defined through the global settings and the global settings can be reached through the render settings under the settings menu. Here you have this default displacement and subdivision rollout menu. And these are your global settings, which match the settings that you have in here with the exception of the tide bounce and the amount parameter. But these two are more advanced parameters that we don't want you tweaking anyway, unless you really, really have to and you know, sort of in niche cases. So we're not going to fret about these here. Okay. Okay. So these are your global settings. Let's just turn the render settings off here and let's untick the use global settings options here, because now we're essentially going to be setting, uh, the quality settings on a per tag per object basis. And this can be really useful because imagine that you had, uh, well, multiple displaced meshes in your scene, multiple displaced objects. Well, now you can control the displacement settings for each of those objects through their own V-Ray geometry tag. And that way you can really easily and really quickly optimize the scene. All right. Okay. So now as far as the parameters in here go, the edge length parameter is the most important parameter. So if we up it, we're essentially, uh, saying that we're not subdividing this 
uh, mesh here quite as heavily. Okay, there's going to be less polygons on it. And in turn, you know, we're going to be using a lot less of our system memory. Everything's going to be a lot less uh, hardware resource intensive, if you will. Uh, but you know, it's also going to look less detailed. Now, if we lower the edge length here, say to one, well, now we're really subdividing this mesh. There's a lot of polygons on this mesh and everything's just going to look a little bit more detailed. Now, the details do depend on the type of displacement that you're doing. We've got these, uh, well, we got this rock surface here. And as you can see, you know, there's not a whole lot of those granular details on this displacement anyway. So visually, the difference between the edge length of one and maybe 10 on our sort of displacement that we're doing here, it's not going to be that noticeable anyway, because we don't have that, that many granular details in our displacement map anyway, right? Okay, so uh, then let's uh, talk about the view dependent toggle here. So this one's really important because with it turned on, the displacement is going to be driven depending on your camera angle. So um, when you have the view dependent option toggle to on, your edge length parameter here is basically defined in pixels. Okay, so right now when we have the edge length set to one, we're saying that uh, based from this angle that we're looking at, okay, one pixel is going to be the size of one polygon on this uh, subdivided mesh. Okay, so as you can imagine, one pixel here is one polygon. So we have a bunch of polygons on this wall right now. All right. Um, now, if we uh, toggle this view dependent option to off, well, now the edge length, so the size of that, those polygons is being defined in your uh, in your scene units. So because we're using centimeters here, uh, the uh, edge length of one polygon here is going to be one centimeter. Okay, because we have it set to one. If we had our scene unit set to millimeters, then it would be one millimeter. Now, the view dependent option is pretty great for still images because, you know, the further away you are from an object, the less details you're going to see anyway. So why not just, you know, have it set to be view dependent? And so that way you're going to use less resources for things you're, that are going to be really far away from the camera because you're not really going to be able to make up the details anyway. All right. But for animations, when things are moving and such, well, then for consistency reasons, you do want to have this checkbox disabled. Right. Right. OK. And then last but not least, we got the max subdivisions parameter in here. And this is sort of like a cap for how many subdivisions or essentially for how many polygons you can have on this mesh. OK, so if you go with a really low edge length value, it might get capped by this max subdivision value here, by this parameter here. All right. OK, so that is pretty much it. All right. I'm just going to reset my accent here to four because it worked great. Um, I'm not going to use the global settings because I prefer to adjust the quality settings on a per tag basis. And um, yeah, OK, that's that's pretty much that. All right. And so um, with that, this we're pretty much concluding this tutorial. You know, we've uh, demoed how you can use V-Ray displacement, you know, uh, you use it by placing a V-Ray geometry tag on the object that you want to displace. And then, you know, you make sure that it's mapped properly with the material tag here. Uh, you want to make sure that there's a texture in the displacement texture slot and uh, off you go, right? It's that easy, that simple. So thanks for tuning in to this tutorial. We hope you've learned something new. We hope you've had a good time. And as for what's coming up next in the series, well, we're super excited about the next tutorial as well, because we'll be leveraging chaos cosmos to populate our scene with some pretty cool assets here and so things are really going to start picking up pace here all right so again thank you for tuning in take care and we'll see you in the next one bye bye everybody